Yes, guys, and welcome back. Now we are here to discuss about the amendments which are applicable for all the CA final exams which are supposed to be conducted on in November 2023 and later attempts as well. So these are amendments which have happened on a regular basis in the past. Now, why do these amends, amendments actually happen? Your company's India's implementation rules 2015, which was the original act based on which the companies are supposed to comply with India's and there is a particular roadmap which has been given. We have discussed about that. But this particular India's, India's rules are being amended every year to include at least a couple of paragraphs which could change the impact of these India's. Now, I'm saying that you don't have to get all the Indias at one single point of time or you can't amend all the Indias throughout each year. There are one or two paragraphs of each Indias at the max about four or five Indias in each year which undergo this amendment. This is pursuant to companies Indias amendment rules which is implemented on 31st March every year with effect from 1st April of the subsequent year. So you will have a company's Indias amendment rules 2020 which will start applying from 1st April 2020 onwards. Similarly, you have companies in India's amendment rules 2023, which is effective from 1st April 2023. In this way, you have this company's in India's amendment rules, which keep affecting every year. There are two such companies uh, in India's amendment rules that we will be discussing. One is the one which was implemented in 2022, which is with effect from 1st April 23. And the other one is Companies India's Amendment Rules 2023, which is effective from 1st April 2023. Now, these two will be effective from for the attempts from November 2023 and later as well. So please pay attention because there could be a question arising out of these kind of amendments, which is very, very important to understand. Now, apart from this, we have also one small adjustment or small change to the CSR rules. Now the company social response, corporate social responsibility is what we have discussed. Yes, it did undergo change, but very insignificant change. I don't expect testing to happen on that, but still there is a very small perspective change in the CSR as well. CSR is also as per your company's act, and therefore a small change in the company's act has also given an impact in your topic that is a CSR. Generally has a weightage of about four marks, and the amendments are not so substantial that they could actually affect your entire understanding of the topic. So let's start going around and understand what are the changes which occurred in the Indies. I will start with the most recent one first. The most recent one is Companies India's Amendment Rules 2023, which is with effect from 1st April 2023. And this change has given us about four paragraphs in four different standards which got changed. Now it is very important to understand these four. Let's look at the four changes which occurred. The first change that you see here is with respect to the first change that you see is with respect to India's one, the other one with respect to India's eight, the other one with respect to India's 12 and lastly with effect to India's 101. It's not exactly two different changes, 12 and 101 more or less are interlinked. So you can understand there are broadly only three changes which has occurred, India's 1, 8 and 12. These are the three major changes. 101 is consequential change to India's 12. So three broad changes, are they significant? Absolutely no. I gave you a brief so that you understand exactly what change has happened. The first one with respect to India's one. The change is observe that India's one is about presentation of financial statements. When we talk about presentation of financial statements, you need to understand that there is also a disclosure aspect which is included in it. I hope you remember AS1. What was AS1? Disclosure of accounting policies. Now that aspect is also a part of India's one. Now, where you talk about the disclosure of accounting policies, what accounting policies should be disclosed? All significant accounting policies adopted by an enterprise in preparation and presentation of financial statements 
should be disclosed correct but that word significant accounting policy that word has been eliminated now let me give you a reason why should the word significant be eliminated now even when it was significant the standard never explains or never discusses on what is significant and what is not a company takes its own discretionary view on what is a significant accounting policy which should be disclosed and what is insignificant and should not be disclosed now that is too much of a leeway to the corporate that is the reason why the standard amended it and said i will tell you what is significant and what is not so i will eliminate the word significant and now i'll insert the word material and what is material we will discuss about that that is a small change which occurred in indias 1 so what is the change which occurred in indias 1 the word disclosure of significant accounting policies the word significant in that has been eliminated and has been now replaced with the word material so all material accounting policies are necessary to be disclosed in your notes to accounts now that is how your indias 1 reads got it now what is the impact of this change we will discuss and we'll also explain what is the word material the second change is with respect to indias 8 which is your accounting policies estimates and errors where we discussed about what is an accounting policy change in accounting policy estimates change in accounting estimates and errors out of this standard it's basically a very small standard and out of that very small standard he changed the aspect of change in accounting estimates and he said i will now call it as change at, as an accounting estimate not a change in accounting estimate so is the significant is there a significant impact absolutely no we would have done the same thing even if the standard was as it is without this amendment but he has made some quantitative sorry qualitative changes in the standard and it is not going to impact your understanding of the standard by any chance it's just going to consolidate your view on the standard and no great impact happens the impact is with indias 12 that is a third amendment i told you the third and the fourth are interrelated when it comes to indias 12 when we talk about income tax now this is where the impact has allied now what he says is there are certain places or certain transactions which give rise to a deductible temporary difference and a taxable temporary difference at the same time and in a equal manner they are same and they are equal so amounts are same but they are one is deductible one is taxable temporary difference so it gives rise to a deferred tax asset as well as a liability in one single transaction in such cases he can say you are exempted from recognizing the deferred tax asset and liability as such it is not going to make any impact because there is a deferred tax asset there is a deferred tax liability he said there's no point for you to show both of them so you are exempted from actually disclosing that will understand a little more in depth when we take it up one by one indias 101 is aligned to that i will discuss it at a later point of time it has something to do with the same change which happened in indias 1 but with effect to indias 116 which is with respect to leases you will understand that only after we take some examples to understand the effect of change in indias 12 let's break it down the first one the first one when we are talking about indias 1 when we say indias 1 the aspect of presentation of financial statements such financial statements also includes your notes to accounts so disclosure in notes to accounts will also form part of the same indias 1 when we talk about the disclosure of uh, sorry in notes to accounts the first of such disclosure is your accounting policies and earlier we discussed that significant accounting policies adopted by an enterprise in preparation and presentation of financial statements should be disclosed as a part of your notes to accounts however this has undergone a change what is the change which has undergone now the small tiny change which has undergone here is that word significant accounting policies has been eliminated and now has been replaced with a new term called as material now when do you say something is material it is not going to impact your standard by any chance because of this replacement of word your understanding either in the form of significant 
are in the form of material will still remain the same because a material accounting policy is such kind of an accounting policy which when disclosed or which when not disclosed will change the decision making of the user. So user based on the disclosure of that accounting policy or based on not disclosing that particular accounting policy is going to change his opinion on the financial statements or change his decision making on the financial statements is exactly what we are talking about material accounting policies. Yes, though the word significant was not explained earlier, we would have in common sense understood that the word material and significant were exactly the same according to you and me. But however, the standard wanted to be a little more clear in understanding what is significant accounting policies. So he went ahead and explained or removed that word significant and now inserted the word material and now explain the word material accounting policies as well. Let's see what he says. Para 10 and Para 114 of India's 1 have been modified by replacing the word significant accounting policies with the word material accounting policies. Further, the disclosure of accounting policies has been modified and has been discussed with the accounting policies information to be considered as material. What is material? He does explain even that. According to the amendment, accounting policy information is material when it is reasonable to be expected to influence the decision making of the user of general purpose financial statement make on the basis of those financial statements. So any user using your financial statements is making a particular decision and this accounting policy which you want to disclose or you don't want to disclose is going to impact the decision making of the user, it should be considered as material and has to be disclosed as a part of India's one. So like I told you, it's not going to influence your understanding of the standard because even if the word significant was there, you would have understood the standard in the same sense. But he wanted to be a little more clear and a little more imposing. That is the reason why he made that strategic change of eliminating the word significant and inserting or replacing it with the word material. This is the first change which occurred with effect from 1st April 2023. What is the second change? The second one is with respect to India's 8 where he eliminated the use of the word change in accounting estimates and has replaced it with the definition of accounting estimate itself. What do you understand by an accounting estimate? Estimate is definitely a material, uh, uh, sorry, a monetary term because you are measuring it in terms of money, in terms of a rupee or in terms of a dollar, you are estimating them, out, right? Accounting estimate is where you make an estimate. So these are monetary items. These are monetary items which are used in preparation of financial statements. But this measurement of accounting estimate is subjected to a change. There is an uncertainty in the making that particular estimate. Because even if you remember, when we talk about accounting estimates, we always say that it is the management which actually makes an estimate based on the past information. Your provision for doubtful debts is always an estimate, right? Your expected credit losses as per India's 109 is also an estimate. Now, when you talk about these kind of estimates, your uh, provision for warranties, warranties or guarantees, that is also an estimate. So when you're talking about these kind of estimates, you need to understand that estimate is a monetary item which the management determines based on its past knowledge. So that's why there is always an uncertainty. This is how he has defined your accounting estimate as well. Accounting estimate is a monetary amount in the financial statements that is subjected for material uncertainty. So there could be an uncertainty which emerges Yes, because past, I understand that, you know, the provision for bad debt was only 3% on an average. But now I see that it has significantly increased beyond 5%. So there is a material effect on the estimate as well. Got it? They are estimates, so they are obviously subjected to a change. I'm sorry about that. I think we missed it. Moving to India's 12. Now this is one more impact. Now what is this India's 12 impact that we are talking about? It's very simple. man. 
when a particular transaction gives rise to when a particular transaction when you are recording that particular transaction it is giving rise to two effects it is giving me a deductible temporary difference as well as a taxable temporary difference at the same time it's giving rise to a deductible temporary difference and a taxable temporary difference at the same time why does this occur have you ever understood the concept what i'm talking about as such i would have recognized a deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability and i could have set off so what is the point of even recognizing those things provided they are similar in amount now why do they arise for example have a look at this concept of india's 12 in government grants when you come across this particular category of government grants you come up with a concept where a non monetary grant given to an enterprise a particular machine i have received it free of cost a particular piece of land which i received free of cost now land is a very common thing right right so let's say a land was received free of cost icai did receive a land in the form of a government non monetary government grant at multiple places because the government has intended icai to actually build their premises over there now what does icai do they can either have two possible treatments for that recognize the land at a nominal value probably 100 rupees or 1000 rupees or a lakh rupee whatever it is just recognize the value of the land and leave it what is the other perspective or other way of accounting treatment you can recognize the land at its fair value by giving a counter by giving a counter credit to the deferred government grant account so land account debit to deferred government grant account your income tax act does not allow this to happen your income tax act says that you are not supposed to recognize the land at fair value when you haven't bought the land at its value at all you've got it free of cost so it's always at nominal value but when you recognize it at fair value you are applying your balance sheet approach an item on your asset side in book value land is a higher value than your tax base similarly on the liability side there's a deferred government grant account whose tax base is absolutely zero so what happens there is a deductible temporary difference and a taxable temporary difference both have emerged now this is the reason when they occur as per the same transaction and are of a similar amount then there is an exemption which is inserted into india's 12 as per para 15 and 24 which says that you don't have to recognize a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability for such transactions wherever they arise wherever they arise you are not supposed to recognize a deferred tax asset or a liability on those transactions exactly while he inserted this and i understood this that is exactly where india's 101 comes in understand with respect to leases even lease has a very significant uh, differential treatment when it comes to income tax purposes because as per your india's 116 if you remember we recognize something called as rou asset and we recognize something called as a lease liability an asset and a liability giving rise to but your your income tax does not give you that particular option of recognizing a leased asset and or an rou asset and a lease liability so what happened there is a temporary differences which are arising one is deductible one is taxable what india's 101 says you are exempted so that exemption does not apply with respect to leases and not just to leases even if you remember your provision for dismantling your provision for dismantling or decommissioning provision also there is a similar concept when you recognize a decommissioning provision you are increasing the value of the asset and crediting it to the provision for decommissioning now this is a similar increase on the asset and a similar increase on the liability giving rise to deductible and taxable temporary differences genuinely if you go as per india's 12 after the amendment you're not supposed to recognize a deferred tax asset or liability on it but india's 101 has specifically given an exemption to this particular paragraph from india's 116 so according to india's 101 at the time of first adoption of the standard if there is a rou asset and a lease liability which is arising or there is a provision for decommissioning which is arising you are supposed to recognize a deferred tax asset and a liability on these items clear 
these are the four changes in days one where they change the word significant accounting policies to material accounting policies accounting estimates where he was talking about a change in accounting estimate being defined as an accounting estimate monetary amount where the there is a uh, significant uncertainty in measuring that particular amount in days 12 exemption where for recognizing a deferred tax asset and a deferred tax liability when there is a deductible and taxable temporary differences arising in the same transaction and an exemption to this an exemption of exemption for exemption in india's 101 with respect to leases and provision for decommissioning where you have to recognize a dta and dtl these are fundamentally the changes which have occurred as per companies accounting stand in india's amendment rules 2023 which are with effect from 1st april 2023 and are effective even for your exams starting from November 23 and thereafter. Clear? Now, while these are the changes, we will also look at the changes with respect to the previous year. That is on 1st April 2022, what are the changes which have occurred? There are particularly five changes which have occurred. We will go into it and we can deeply discuss about each of such change which has occurred. 